She talks to the people all night long, chatting on a gabbing and a singing her song. All the divas down on Rainbow Street love to hear Tony go tweet, 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 talking Tony. Talk, talk, talking Tony. Oh, talking Tony gonna really gonna talk tonight. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Tony. I'm Tony Holmperm, the singing diva of Long Island. And this is my little interview show on Strong Island Television, part of the Strong Island Entertainment Network. Joining me today, all the way from Hollywood, California, um, someone who, I, who I've been such a, a big, big, huge fan of um, ever since I first saw him in his, I believe his first starring role in the movie Gone But Not Forgotten, Mr. Matthew Montgomery. Hey. Hello, Matthew. <laughs> How you doing, Tony? You I look doing beautiful well. as always. Oh, oh, go on, Matthew. Go on. Oh, no, go on, go on. <laughs> no, no, go, go on, Talk right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but enough about me. What do you think about me? No, just <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, so, um, Matthew, I want to thank you again. Um, uh, I do want to just quickly apologize. We had a, a few little technical glitches. We're starting in just a few minutes late. But believe me, uh, look, at, look, at, look at this man. It's, it's worth the wait. <laughs> Come on, people. Give me a break here. <laughs> uh, but, um, Yes, uh, Matthew, as I was saying, when, when I first contacted you uh, and on Facebook, you know, I told you that, you know, I've been a huge fan of yours ever since I first saw you in Gone But Not Forgotten, and I have followed you ever since then in movies such as Long Term Relationship, Back Soon, Socket, Pornography, A Thriller, Red's, Redwoods, Role Play, Finding Mr. Right, Flight of the Cardinal, um, and there's there's some other things you did that I want to I want to discuss. I don't want to throw them all out there. And of course yeah. now now uh, director of Devil's Path, which is currently yeah. on Amazon Prime, which I just recently uh, watched a great great uh, indie thriller, um, gay themed. I guess we you know we should we can call it yeah. what, what it is. Um, yeah. And that was uh, that was a, a great film. I loved it. Um, as I as Thank I've you. loved every, every everything that you've done, so um, enough of me shooting my mouth off, Matthew. Uh, I want everyone to get to know you. Um, where did you grow up, and uh, were you always interested in acting and, and film theater uh, growing up? Yeah, I. Um, it was just sort of like I grew up, sort of that kind of always being uh, something that I knew I wanted to to do. When I was really, really little, um, I used to think people lived in my television set. And so <laughs> I wanted to figure out how I could shrink myself down to be in that television set. So uh, my dad had to explain to me, no, there are actors and what they do and that whole thing. And so ever since I was a little boy, it was all I ever wanted to, all I ever wanted to do. And so, um, you know, I'm from Texas from Southwest Texas. So like oh. down in the Corpus Christi area, sort of down mm -hmm. by the, the Gulf. So, you know, I grew up in this little beach town, sort of like, uh, you know, definitely nothing very glamorous ever happens there. And so mm -hmm. I just, uh, whenever I decided to, uh, come out to California, to, uh, LA to go to school, I decided to go ahead and, you know, take a crack at, take a crack at acting and it took a while mm -hmm. to sort of you know kind of get into get into mm -hmm. this, now 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 matthew i believe um now just recently I, I watched devil's path on amazon prime and i think today i saw the very 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 first thing you did which was um uh reign of the dead <laughs> a, a, a zombie short uh 
And uh, you, you had that classic line, it's raining brains, I believe. It's raining brains, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we shot that in, in uh, Pittsburgh, <laughs> right outside of Pittsburgh. That was so much fun. That was like my first... <laughs> My first taste of like actually being, you know, in production and working with a mm-hmm. really great director and, you know, it was, and it was zombies. So like, how do you not? Right. Do that? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you not love, love zombies? Fortunately, you, you didn't have to get into any zombie makeup. You, you, uh, no, you, no, no, you no, remained no. I'm, I'm the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were, you were the, you were the bad, you, well, not, not the bad guy. You were like the badass, really. Yeah. 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 The, 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 right. Exactly. The badass, the badass good guy, sort of. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, how did that feel? Like, you know, that, that very first time, you know, being, being on set and like, you know, how, how exciting was it? It, it was, I remember very vividly that it was uh, this feeling of, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, Mm -hmm. this is it right here. And so it was just sort of affirming, I think, and empowering in a lot of ways. And um, and it was also, you know, a really sort of, um, I think, it was such a family environment. And a lot of the crew and cast members knew each other in some way. And uh, the director who works out of Pittsburgh a lot, you know, uh, knew a lot of the people that he brought with him into onto his team. So it felt very sort of it was a nice way for me to sort of uh, be introduced into what it's like being in a collaborative environment, collaborative mm-hmm. environment like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, it was like, yeah, this is it. This is it for me. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drag me. Kicking and screaming away from this now, <laughs> and, and of course, I'm sure you. You know, at, at that time, you must have felt like you know you you've like really you've hit you've hit it big, not knowing that there is still so much more to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, I mean, I had no idea, like, sort of what you know. Especially when I really started getting in, involved in gay indie cinema, I feel like that sort of mm. like really kind of like really open things up for me just even creatively uh, mm-hmm. myself so mm-hmm. and then of course after that um came gone but not forgotten which mm-hmm. really that was I, I mean really that's your your breakthrough role i mean i i, I think where mm-hmm. you know really the whole world got to um see you yeah, and and I mean, I was really excited when Michael Akers and Sandenberg, the um, director and producer respectively, uh, cast me in that project. And like, I remember just being so excited and like nervous because, you know, it was um, a feature. It was the first time I was actually going to be acting in a feature length film and be carrying a, a lead role. And so, and it was very intense it's a very intense, intense story. Intense yes, role. yes, it is. And, it really is. And I remember, uh, I remember doing so much research uh, with the director about the role at the time, and really kind of getting into, you know, all of the little nuances of the character's background, and um, and that was also a situation where you know we shot in, I believe it was in Northern California, out up in. In a, in a cabin somewhere so we all got to stay in one place together and so mm-hmm. it was once again this sort of sense of family and kind of feeling like oh okay this is everybody's being supportive and just a really good experience mm-hmm. so it was a really good first experience for me well i i mean that's still a, a movie that i can watch over and over again i i, I love that movie um let, let me also ask you now being a an, an out gay actor um did you ever have anyone try to you know pressure pressure you as as a lot of gay actors have been in hollywood to you know stay in the closet or you know any, anything like that oh sure early on i mean it was very common to be told uh from people in the industry even even people in the community in the industry uh to give you the advice to not come out and to you know sort of keep that keep that whole thing hidden Uh, for me though i'm not sure if there was 
a specific moment where I was like, you know, no. But, um, oh, no, actually, yes, there was. I do remember Oh, now. oh okay. <laughs> yeah, there's actually oh, a specific know. moment. No, there's a specific moment. Oh, I want to know. It, it was about, it actually was uh, after I shot Gone But Not Forgotten. And mm -hmm. my hometown newspaper called and interviewed me. And um, they uh, did this interview with me over the phone. And I remember I was at my day job. I was working, uh, selling pens at the time at, in, in the mall. And, um, and so I, had, I was in the back office mm -hmm. on the phone with this interviewer, had the interview, and then maybe five minutes after the interview was over, she called me back and said, mm -hmm. um, oh, I wanted to ask you one last thing that I uh, forgot to ask you in the, in, in the interview, which is, are, are you gay? And, um, and I remember being so panicked mm. that I had, that I pretended like I had, uh, something urgent to get to. So I had to get off the phone. Oh, and so geez. when I got off the phone and I remember having that moment in the back office thinking to myself, okay, this is, this is it. Like, this is a decision that like, you know, and, and I picked up the phone and I was like, you know what? It's part of who I am. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to just, you know, stifle who I am. And so I called her back and I told her, yes, I'm, you know, I'm gay. And that was sort of the start of it. And then I was, mm -hmm. you know, and I was such a, it was such a relief to just sort of like get that out there and just not. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and uh, I really, I, you know, actors and actresses like you that um they're honest about who they really are i think it's so, so great especially for the young people today uh i'm 55 oh my god i don't believe i said that out loud but i'm 55 <laughs> and when i was a kid it was like it was unheard of you know yeah. and so like for me to know that you know the young people today, especially the LGBTQ youth, you know, see, you know, actors and actresses like you that are, you know, open about who they really are. It, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's, it's a very powerful thing to, you know, to let people know, you know, it's okay to be who you really are. Yes, exactly. And, you know, and also I feel like it's, really important i think that we support each other in how we all kind of come into our own sort of at our own pace mm -hmm. and like and i think that that's you know been um you know for i know for me i was you know felt very sort of supported and and so i hope that in some way you know um being out you know sort of helps somebody else kind of realize that it's okay that you know that absolutely it's, it's yeah gonna be okay you know i know for me like in terms of my career it i didn't know what would happen after that and what, what right. ended up happening was it opened up so many doors for me in gay indie cinema and like right and so that is something that i'm like you know, i mean for me when i think for. when i think of gay indie cinema i think of you i mean it's right. you know thank uh, you Really, wow. you know, that really just, means a lot. No, uh, uh, honestly, I, you know, that's that's really when I think of gay indie cinema, I think of you because you've done so many uh, great gay indie films. Uh, not only Gone but Not Forgotten, which is you know one of my favorites, but of course, uh, Long Term Relationship, uh, and uh, then another great one, Back Soon. Mm. Uh, I love that one, which was um, I just love that whole sort of that fantasy element. It, it, it was the the um, the wife had died of the, of the other the other the other man yeah. and and uh, her soul went into you. Yep. And, and and both both characters initially are are straight, but yes. when the 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 wife of the of the 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 other um, it was um, Wyndham Beecham who played the other role. Uh, when his his wife died, her soul goes into you, and then uh, it's been a, it's been a while since I've seen that one. I don't remember how you guys actually connected. Me too. <laughs> but <laughs> and you were in it. <laughs> but 
but that whole thing about like the the souls sort of recognizing each other yes. and and the 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 physical wasn't that important it was it yes. was that the you know it was the the souls uh recognized each other mm -hmm. and you know uh which i i just thought that was that was really such a beautiful story yeah. oh, it really nice. was yeah. I think so too. I really love Back Soon. Back Soon is is actually one of the one of the projects that I've been in that's probably I get, you know, some of the more res uh, more response from because people I think were really affected by exactly the thing that you're just talking about, which is mm -hmm. that it's sort of, you know, kind of deeper than than even um, sexuality. It's yes. Sort of, yes. It's it's just you know deeper than that. So. Ab ab absolutely. Uh, then there was um, Socket, which yeah. that, I'm going to be honest with you. My husband hated that one. Oh, I, no. I, I, lo I loved it. My husband, he, <laughs> he loves my, Socket. My, hus my husband is like, he likes, you know, just be period dramas. And, okay. You know, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So anything with any sort of like sci fi, you know, horror fantasy element, he's just like, I, I, I I don't want to watch uh, it. Yeah. Something else, and I'm, I'm like, no, it's staying on. Just, just, just be quiet and watch it. Uh, but that was, you know, that was very, very different for uh, uh, a gay indie movie. That whole um, and and they've it's been described as very David Cronenberg esque. Yes. Yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and like the you know when they actually put like the electrical sockets into their yes. arms so that they can get the, the electrical feed straight into them. It was, uh, uh, it, it was, it was, it was a wild movie. It really was. I think, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's very sort of out there and like, so do you think your husband would have liked it if it was like socket in like 1940s, maybe? <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you were dressed as Marie Antoinette, Okay, then he might go for the ride. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but no, no. Uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, another thing too, Matthew is, uh, and you know, I, I, it never bothered me at all. But um, you know, you've you've never had a problem with doing uh, nudity in films. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 no, you know, I guess um, I Which, yeah. I think it's great that, you know, to that be way. comfortable with your body. I think it's great to be comfortable with your body. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't bother me. But uh, um, the the very first time you ever had to do it, a uh, uh, well, actually, uh, I think there was uh, there's nudity in Gone but Not Forgotten. I, I there's think. a little bit of nudity in there. Yeah, right. Yeah. But how, like how in Socket, there was full frontal in Socket. Right. I remember. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You went, you went the full Monty in that one. Right, the whole <laughs> thing, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 um, and, and, you know, did it ever, you know, were you ever like, you know, did that ever like, you know, bother you a little that, you know, oh, got to be naked on set or anything? I mean. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. It's It didn't necessarily bother me, but it is sort of one of those situations where like, you know, it's really hard to feel sexy when you're like there's a camera here and there's like a boom and there's like you know you know so uh and you know like I, i'm talking like specifically when when i'm doing any sort of um intimate scene you mm -hmm. know um but even even just sort of the stand just the regular nudity where i'm just sort of like putting on clothes or something it's all very sort of mechanical and everything right so you're very sort of like aware of like the light. So I think you're you're too busy sort of being self conscious about everything, that, mm -hmm. that, you know. But um, but yeah, I think that that overall though, I was just sort of comfortable with my body, and I and and really for the most part, I felt like um, the nudity in the films that I've that I've done nudity in sort of uh, is motivated by something in the story. Right. It never felt gratuitous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I feel like that you know, you know, makes uh, makes it makes it easier. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of socket, your husband has a small role in, in socket. Not in socket in no. uh, in uh, pornography, a thriller. Oh, pornography. Okay, pornography, a thriller. So um, 
I guess I have my have my notes wrong. No, oh, yeah, my notes God. wrong. <laughs> was now was was what, delete, delete, you, delete. I know, I know. <laughs> Matthew, I've I've been stalking you like 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 a white woman on Facebook <laughs> these, the past few days. You know, I love a good I mean, stalker. So and, this is fine. You know, no, but I but I always do this. I always like to you know find little tidbits of information. You know, yeah, that, you know, yeah. You know, maybe maybe you might not ordinarily get get asked on, on an interview, but um, did, did uh, okay. So so Steve, he had a small role in pornography, a thriller. Was that um, the first time that you did something uh, in film together? That you were both in the, like the same project? Yes, and that's that's where we that's where we met. Was and that's where you met. Uh, that's where we met. So we always tell people that we met doing pornography. Isn't it romantic? <laughs> and and the scene that we have together, mm -hmm. we have one. We have, we have a scene together, and it's at he he's, he cruises me in a in a your um at a uh, right, in the bathroom. That's right. In the yeah, bathroom. the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> the bathroom. Um, so was it love at first sight? You know, I thought he was entirely too good looking. So like, it just <laughs> never even occurred to me that that was, you know, and in fact, when he asked me out and uh, original, and, you know, initially asked me out, I didn't realize he was asking me out. This is like a whole long story. But like, you know, uh, the point is, is that like, I was just so oblivious to the, mm -hmm. you know, that he wanted to ask me out on a date. And so it took a while for me to sort of go, Oh, this guy's like into me. And so, mm -hmm. um, and then the rest is history. And now we've been together history. for, yeah, we've been together for 12 years and mm -hmm. uh, we've been married for five years. I'm lo looking at my husband. But... <laughs> yes, five years. We've been married five, five years. years. Mm -hmm. Five years, le legally married. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, that's terrific. And then actually you... Um, you co-starred in role play. Yes. The two, the, both of you, which is another one of, another one of my uh, favorite movies that you've done. I Thanks. love that movie. And, uh, and I, I know you got, I know when you were on the circuit for this, you got asked like a million, million questions. Oh, what is it like working with your husband? <laughs> yada, yada, I mean, I yada. figured it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but what was it like, right? <laughs> but what, what, what was it like? You know, just let me know. Pretend no one ever. Pretend no one ever asked you. <laughs> you know, it's one of those situations where you're like, okay, this can go one of two ways, and mm -hmm. so you know. But it was. I love working with. I just like hanging out with my husband. I like mm -hmm. being around him, and so it was sort of um, a really good test at sort of how we would be in a work environment together and sort mm -hmm. of creatively sort of doing something together and um i had a blast like working with them it, it was the only time that we've ever actually acted opposite each other like that in uh in a project to that you know uh to that extent and so where we were both like you know the leads in a movie together so it was yeah, it was, it's, it's something that I look back on and like it always makes me smile because I remember mm -hmm. just having so much fun coming home and like working on the script with him. And, and so. Now, now, when that was filmed in Palm Springs, that, yeah. that, little, that little resort there, that place looked beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, um, um, I forget. I forget the name of it, but um, yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh, the owners uh, are no longer, I think they've, they've since sort of, it's since sort of changed hands, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but like, I mean, Palm Springs is, I'm sure, I, have you been to Palm Springs? No, no. You haven't done, you haven't done the Palm no. Springs thing? No. It's, no. It, it might be too hot, right? It, Cause it gets my, like really hot. My husband hates to travel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and since and since he's doing the wigs, Matthew, he literally has me by the short hairs. <laughs> what, what can I what can I say? What can I say? <laughs> but now uh, I'm thinking about this. Now you you work so well together uh, on role play, which um, is is good, I guess, because you know 
I feel for people that are maybe stuck in a situation right now where they're with somebody that maybe it's not so easy to get along with. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think quarantine has been a big like test for a lot of couples. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, you and Steve are like, you know, married five years together. How many together? How many total? Uh, 12. Or 13, well, something like that, yeah. In, in gay years, that's you're already up to like your 50th I mean, golden wedding anniversary, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at like 15 now. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, my, my husband and I, we've been uh, legally married since 2011 and together since like 2003. I mean, when, I, <laughs> when a, a lot of other gay people hear that we've been together that long, they're like, really? Oh, my God. They... <laughs> I, you know, they can't, you know, because usually, you know, most gay relationships, they're, you know, they, you're lucky if you, they last 24 hours, but. Right, I know, um, exactly. <laughs> and I, actually, I actually said to him, I said, because I, I, I was talking about some of the, you know, a couple of his exes, and I said, can you imagine if you were in quarantine with that one? And he was like, oh, my God. He's like, <laughs> like, I couldn't. He's like, we'd probably end up killing each other so <laughs> so it's 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 great that you know you and steve get along so well especially really you know yeah in this in this situation yeah especially uh, now because we're literally working like you know he's working like just several feet away i'm over there and i'm over here and so right we're having right. to share the space so thank so uh, luckily there's no blood on the walls yet <laughs> not yet well hopefully if, if there's any it's it's just you know that that stage blood so. <laughs> exactly now, now i i thought it was interesting because um you said where you grew up in texas was not far from corpus christi and that's that's a play that um steve is quite well known for doing yes 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 it's uh yeah and it and the play actually takes place in corpus christi and mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it's uh, the Terrence, written by Terrence McNally, and uh, it's it's basically a retelling of the of the story of of uh, Christ if the if he was born in the fifties and gay. Mm -hmm. And so it's um uh so it's really it's it's actually a really uh powerful powerful play, and as heavy as the as the uh, subject matter is, it's actually a very funny play. Like it's mm -hmm. really hilarious. And um, yeah, Steve was in the uh, international tour of, of the play and they went all over the world. And, and then I jumped in uh, sort of right. towards the end of their run. And, um, and yeah, but it's, it, they've gone all over uh, with the, uh, it's, um, you know, I didn't realize that it was, it was written by Terrence McNally. Small World, a very good friend of mine who is also a drag queen, um, is Terrence's nephew. Um, and, uh, oh. uh, unfor unfortunately, you know, Terrence passed away um, yeah. not, not, not too long ago from COVID. So it's very, yeah. it's very sad. It's, you know, very, very sad. Big, big loss for the community and the, uh, and the, the theater world, but yeah, huge our, loss. Our, our prayers to you know Terrence's family, but yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to get too sad. Um, another another movie that you did that I love, Flight of the Cardinal. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a great movie. I love that one. Um, also, a uh, Finding Mister Wright. Oh, that and was fun. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That was a funny one. And uh, Rebecca Cochan, is that how you yes. say Yes, it? Rebecca Cochan, yeah. And she did all those eating out movies. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, she's hilarious. She is so funny. Uh, oh, my God. You know, honestly, the eating out movies, I, really, when I think about them, I think about her. <laughs> I don't know. She is just, I mean, and she's a, a delight to work with. And she's really... Is she yeah, she she's fabulous. She's, she is. She just has a great personality, and she's always laughing or smiling, and so mm -hmm. she has really good energy around her. But she's so funny, man. She is definitely she's definitely doing what she should be doing, which is comedy. So, oh, that that's that's great. Uh, yeah. That yeah, that was you. You've not really done 
too much comedic work. Most of what you've done yeah. has been more dramatic. Sort and, of more in the drama, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And is it true what they say? Is is comedy harder than than I, dramatic? I I think so. I think I think comedy is way harder than than drama. I think it's you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, you know, requires not just a sense of understanding your, you know, character and context and text and all the things that you normally have to sort of understand in, in, in drama, but like, there's also, you know, you have to really understand timing and like, and pacing. And so that's, I think, uh, a whole different, a whole, a whole different skill set. Like I think, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Ab absolutely, <laughs> and you know, and I know as a performer, uh, li well, a live performer, like when you go out in front of uh, of an audience and you're like, you know, you're praying you're going to be funny. It's like wondering if you know, are, are people going to laugh? Uh, you know, it can yeah. it can be terrifying. It re it really it really can be terrifying. But yeah. when they when they actually laugh, then you're just you know you know inside you're like. <gasps> Oh thank God. God! Oh my God! <laughs> it's like oh thank God, they're laughing. Uh, I I know for me it's like I've had those instances and then I, I'm I'm off stage and I and I grab my husband I'm like they were laughing they were oh like was like they liked it they liked it I was like oh thank, thank God thank thank God oh uh, so but uh, so many so many great movies that you that you've done in the uh, in the gay indie world Matthew and. You actually were the recipient of the Artistic Achievement Award for Acting and Producing from Philadelphia's Q Fest. Yeah, yeah. Why is it? Why isn't the award behind you? It's actually <laughs> over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're forgiven. I carry it around with me everywhere I go. Are you, you kidding? You should. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to get you a, a chain? You could wear it like. You know. I'll just like yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a, a really. That was a really big deal for me. It was a really big honor. And like, I, you know, got to show up in person there and talk a little bit about, you know, my journey and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember what I remember about that experience specifically was that there was this younger, um, actor who was, I feel like m maybe just coming out of high school and, uh, came up to me and just told me uh, how much he appreciated my work and how it had sort of helped him in his sort of coming out mm -hmm. sort of experience. And that was really powerful to me to be a part of that and to hear that from somebody like in person like that. Mm -hmm. I, I know when uh, I, it was, I think it was last, su last summer that like I was asked to like um, speak at a, uh, at a camp for young people that were uh, LGBTQ and uh, you know, they were just so appreciative of me just showing up and, you know, and I'm in full drag, of course. And, you know, they were just like so happy to see somebody like me, you know, j just doing, just being there and being myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. So. Just being you. I mean, there's I, exactly, I mean, honestly, I feel like, there's nothing more powerful than that. Just like, you know, just confidently just stepping into your own and just being you and just showing other, everybody else that they can do the same thing. And nothing, you know, it's, it's okay. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you, you've done, you've done a, a marvelous job at doing that. And I'm sure you've been you. such a, a, an inspiration and, and role model to, to so many, uh, LGBTQ youth. Um, on, on that note, we're going to take a quick break for our sponsors, and we'll be right back to talk more with you, Matthew Montgomery. Yay! These messages. <laughs>
everyone. Welcome back to Talking Tony with me, Tony Home Firm. And still with me is my guest, Mr. Matthew Montgomery, coming to us hey. all the way from Hollywood, California. Thank you for staying with me, Matthew. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, now, Matthew, um, we, we talked a lot about a lot of the movies that you uh, you acted in, but what a lot of people may not know about you is you did a lot of Star Trek fan projects. You I, that <laughs> guilty as charged, guilty as charged. <laughs> I, I love. I love a gay sci-fi nerd, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I mean, I am you one don't get too. any more gay sci-fi nerd than this guy. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Um, you actually have the distinction, I believe, of playing the first and, I, I don't know, maybe only gay Klingon. That's true. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> Ridges and all. Uh, Ridges and all, yes. Uh <laughs> That was um, Captain ne Neshta? Is that Neshta, my... yes. Yes, Captain yes. I'm Neshta. so glad that you remember because I actually <laughs> I sort of forgot for a second. You actually played, there was, you actually played also another, another role. I don't remember the, the name of the character, but you, you, didn't, you were just a, a regular human. Yes, I played yeah. a Welsh, uh, um, I played a doctor. I played the, uh, and Dr. Uh, Vaughn, that was Odyssey. Dr. Vaughn. Yes, but yes, in Hidden Dr. Frontier, Vaughn. in Hidden Frontier, you also had like a small, a smaller role. You were like one of the delegates, like around uh, a yes. table. Yes. Oh my God! So, wow, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. You're on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't try me, Matthew. <laughs> I have you. I have you. You, you got my number. Me. I got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how much of a fan I am of yours. I, I love I, it. I love it. <laughs> now, I, um, I have I have to ask because um, I, I'm such a huge, huge Star Trek fan, and um, uh, I need to. I, I, I can't. I can't hold up. I just. I just. I just love Star Trek. We're gonna. We're gonna talk about Star Trek. Okay. All right. But how did you get involved with uh, you know Hidden Frontiers, and and then it it sort of morphed into Odyssey. Well, um, I had seen, I don't, somehow I had seen one of the episodes that they had done and I, uh, was like, this is really cool. <laughs> and so like, I want to be a part of this. And so I reached out to them and said, I will be an extra. I would, anything <laughs> that you need, I would love to be a part of this. And so not thinking anything of it, I didn't think right. that, you know, anybody would get back to me or anything. And they did. And then they got back to me and, uh, and then, yeah. And then I, and then sort of, I worked, I weaseled my way into their little circle and, uh, and then the rest. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, the rest of it, but that's, that was it. Mm -hmm. I, I sent a, sent a letter out to the producer and, uh, and they decided to have me come in and audition. See, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, you just gotta go for it. You never know. You may get, you may get told yes. When I reached out to you and I, I asked you to do my, my exactly TV show, and you said sure. And I was, I was like, what? He said yes. <laughs> and I'm like running, I'm running, I'm holding the phone, I'm showing him. I said, what? I said, Matthew, my God, we said yes. Matthew, my God, we said yes. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he's you like, just got to go for it. Like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> uh, um, but but I got I got to point out, Matthew, you you were probably the twinkiest Klingon I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yes, not, really. <laughs> not really. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when I think of a Klingon, I think of like Michael Dorn. Oh, and, yeah, and like somebody like. Yeah, they're like, just like huge yeah, yeah. and everything, yeah, and you big. know, you know, and you're you're a very, you're a very slender, svelte guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that that has any impact on, on the character, but it, you know, it was it was just like I, I was I was just like he has got to be the skinniest Klingon I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised when they asked me to play a Klingon. I was like, man. Me okay. All right, sure. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> but yeah, 
it was fun. That, I mean, the that, the makeup itself took like hours to like. To right. Uh, oh, I'm I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. And uh, it was and it was a, it was a lot of makeup. I mean, you're they went they went all out on you. Yeah, there's this prosthetic that they use for the forehead that like forehead. has to be yeah, and so you know in order to do the ridges and everything, but mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it had to be a, it had to be a lot of fun. It really did. It was so much fun. It was so much <clears throat> fun, and you know, it's it, it was just a, a whole bunch of a, a a really great group of people that just really wanted to you know do this thing. It's such a passion project for everybody. So was, now. Uh, uh, I, it looked like everything, almost everything, is shot like on gr- behind, like in front of a green screen. For yeah. that, yeah, the whole the whole thing. I, essentially, I mean, I think like occasionally they would do exterior shots, you know, outdoors. But um, for the most part, uh, the director and producer shot everything in his home in this uh, back room in his house where he had up this makeshift green screen Mm -hmm. and they had figured out the whole, this whole system. So they had basically created this sort of mini studio in his house, basically. Hmm. And that's how, that's how it was shot. And and the great thing about it was it it had a lot of um, uh, gay themes in it, you know, specifically your, your storyline being a, a, a gay Klingon. Yes. Yeah. He. Uh, they did not shy away from any of from those storylines. So I thought that was mm-hmm. very, um, you know, uh, just sort of a, ahead of the times, so to speak. Ab- absolutely, because, um, like as we've seen now with uh, Star Trek Discovery, yes, they, they you know, mm-hmm. they have they have you know a, a gay couple on on board the ship. So yeah. I, I mean, it, it seems to me. That you know, that sort of uh, paved the way for what, the Star Trek that we have now. I think, in a sense, that it did. It, I think, in a sense, mm-hmm. that sort of you know, uh, kind of opened you know, sort of definitely uh, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a funny way, Star Trek came before Star Trek. <laughs> very true. <laughs> that that that's very true. Uh, and and I actually wanted to ask you, have because you, you know. This Star Trek fan stuff, since mm-hmm. you did that, a- has progressed. Did you ever see um, the, the Star Trek Continues fan episodes? Um, they're, they're on YouTube. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but uh, I I think there's like six think so. of them. Where they, they actually have like a real set that looks like the original oh. bridge. Oh, I yes, I know what you're talking about. I haven't seen it yet, but the set is amazing, right? Like the they have yeah. the whole thing and everything they yeah i know what you're talking about and the, and, the, and the beeps and the buzzing and it's like the the star trek continues one um they actually did and, and they had some of the uh, uh they had like john delancey was in one episode and wow. um uh the the guy who played apollo in the original series he came back oh, to reprise cool. his role and uh it was like the 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 production and, and writing on it was like it was it was really amazing if you you know you got time yeah. now matthew look it up on i know Star Trek <laughs> Continues. you got plenty of time it's it was like you know it was like really great and i think actually i think it was on like at some at, at some point like when enterprise was on and i think they were actually getting higher ratings than star trek um enterprise that's so, amazing yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's, re- yeah. it's really it's really well done um I would love to see you on like Star Trek Picard or you know. Oh my God, me too. From I, your I yeah, just, from your I lips to God's love... ears. <laughs> God, please, please, God. I, you know, I, I would love to. Now, th- does Steve enjoy sci-fi or Star Trek? You know, I, I think he well. I, I think he goes along for the ride because well, that's I'm into my sci-fi husband. so much. That's yeah. my husband. But I will say that he, when when Discovery came out, he was like hooked, and so like he really, you know, he, not so much in in you know, uh, you know, any of the older series, but uh, he really liked the uh, he really likes Discovery, and so I feel like I got him hooked now. You indoctrinated him. Very good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Very good. Now, um, Matthew, you kind of like, at one point in your career, you took kind of like a sabbatical. You went yeah. back to school to yep. get your MFA in film production at the University of California School of Cinematic Arts. Yes, I got it all out. I did. I, I went to... Yeah, <laughs> I went to USC and um, I, I had actually dropped out of college way early on um, uh, and had never finished my bachelor's degree. And so uh, mm. something that I just had always wanted to do was go back and finish my bachelor's degree, and which I incidentally started at USC. And so when I went back and, uh, and, got in, and then got in, um, once I got my bachelor's, I had the opportunity to go to the cinema school and I just couldn't say no. And it was really life changing for me in a lot of ways because I had already started producing by that point. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I don't think that I recognized quite how much directing was in my future. And so going to, uh, USC film school, I think really kind of, um, just sort of made me become very aware of like how much of a filmmaker and storyteller that I am. I mean, I'll always be an actor, but I, it really kind of made me realize that I wanted to be a director and what kind of stories I wanted to tell and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, directing, you know, it's, it's, it's gotta be fun to be, to call the shots, tell everybody what to do. Are you right? kidding? I get to be the boss. I get to like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Give me my coffee. <laughs> um, was that uh, was that difficult for you making that that switch to like, you know, go back to go back to school to, to continue after, you know, really you you were already a working professional. Yeah, I mean, I think that it was I mean, it was difficult in in the sense that like I had to suddenly do homework and so there was that. <laughs> but you know, but aside from that, it felt very sort of natural. It was something I had always wanted to do. So it was it was, you know, it, it was something I was really glad that I got a chance to be able to go back and finish something that I started. But man, there is something different about suddenly having homework, you know, as an adult. You have mm -hmm. papers to write and everything, but um, mm -hmm. but you know, I feel like it made me a a much more um, conscious sort of creative person. I think I think a lot more differently about the choices I make creatively, and um, especially I think now as a director, I think I because now I understand what direct the directors that I worked for as an actor what what they went through when they mm -hmm. uh, were developing their stories that they cast me in. So I kind mm -hmm. of get it. I get it now. And, you know, and it's, um, it's a whole nother ball game and, you know, it's, uh, but I love it. I just, I love it so much. And uh, of course it, it worked out quite well for you because you have directed devil's path which, if you haven't seen it, if you have Amazon Prime, it's streaming on Amazon Prime right now, people. But not yeah. until not until my show is done. <laughs> you can watch <laughs> it when this is over. But uh, yes, Devil's Path, um, fabulous movie. Very, you, you know, as I was watching it, I was just, I was just like, oh, I was like, oh, this is like, you know, like a gay hit, uh, Alfred Hitchcock thriller. Oh, I love that. I mean, that's like I mean, really goal. That's uh... <laughs> even even having doing your own little Alfred Hitchcock cameo at, at the end. Yeah. I mean, what could be yes. more you know Hitchcock than that? But yeah. um, now you also co-wrote Devil's Pass, correct? Yes, yes. I co-wrote it with the lead uh, Stephen Tordokas, who is who plays Noah. Very plays Noah. Very very talented guy, and uh, he really sort of helped me uh, kind of, I think, streamline the story in a lot of ways. And so working with him was really sort of the, the one of the first times that I actually worked with somebody uh, together as a writer like that. And so it was, it was a really cool experience because he has, uh, we have similar sensibilities, but we write differently. And so he uh, sort of came from, I think, a, a, a more sort of, uh, I think he had a really good sense of dialogue in a lot of ways. And I came in from a more visual sort of action oriented 
um, mm -hmm. place. But anyway, um, but yeah, so yeah, working with Steven was really, really great. He plays and, and originally you had, you thought you were going to play one of the, one of the leads, correct? And then, yeah. and then you just, then you decided, you know, no, I'm going to, I'm going to take myself out and just direct. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, when I, once I realized that like, I wanted to not only direct it because it was a, a brief period where I was uh, potentially going to co-direct it with somebody. And, uh, but then when, when it became clear that I wanted to really focus on directing, I just, the idea of, of, at, you know, trying to direct myself in my first you know feature film um just seemed insane to me and so uh i thought you know it might be better for me to just focus on the directing uh maybe have a cameo and bring in somebody else who uh ended up being jd scalzo and uh to play the role of patrick and i mean for so many reasons i'm so glad that we got jd to come in and mm -hmm. play that part Mm -hmm. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I could have done a better job. I mean, I think that the role was meant for JD. He just knocked it out of the park. Him and he was and, great. Yes. Ah, so he's so good and just so talented and uh, such a skilled actor. And so he and uh, Stephen just really they they worked really well together. And so it was it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. and it was uh, it was a very refreshing. Uh, take on you know a, a gay indie movie and uh, you know it was just you know so different uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't you know I think somebody I, I read one review where somebody was saying how like oh thank God it wasn't about you know like you know like your typical you know gay relationship or something about HIV or or you know mm -hmm. things that we've seen you know so often in in a lot of uh, gay indie movies you know it it really <clears throat> it it broke new ground really well i appreciate you saying that because you know early on when we were developing the story i mean one of the big conversations that steven and i had was whether or not we were going to incorporate um a, you know uh hiv and into the storyline in some way because you know it takes place in the early 90s and right it right really seemed, and it, <clears throat> it was, we went back and forth on it uh, quite a bit and ultimately decided that, you know, that, that it just wasn't part of the story and we would be, right. it, it would sort of be sort of pushing it into a story where it wasn't relevant in this particular story. Absol absolutely. And so, and, and that was kind of a, a big turning point, I think, for us because I think it helped us really kind of find, find the seed of the story, which is what mm. ended up, what you end up seeing. <clears throat> and so, yeah. Now, now the very first day of of filming, did you have a lot of butterflies that morning? Like knowing, you know that, knowing that that you know the, that first day. <laughs> oh, I'm I was living. like, <laughs> what am I doing? What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> I was like so overwhelmed, <laughs> and you know, it was it was really great because I had you know, we had a really great team and I had over uh, to us in a sense over prepared. And, um, and then we sort of found our groove after like a couple of days, you know, we sort of found our groove, but do you know, I don't know. Cause I tell this story all the time. I wonder if you may already know this, but about what happened to us halfway through production. No. Okay. So we shot, <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So we shot, um, in Northern California, uh, right outside of Santa Rosa in mm -hmm. a town called Guerneville. And uh, this was, a, a, you know, a couple years ago or so ago where when they had those forest fires up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we had, you know, our first week of shooting and then we had, you know, a couple of days off and then woke up to, you know, uh, start shooting again on Monday and the sky was orange. Oh. And so we ended up having to get... Uh, evacuated. There was smoke everywhere. You know, the the fires had just like overnight spread like crazy, and so mm -hmm. um, it ended up being uh, really bad uh, for a lot of the businesses in the homes. And so, anyway, to make a long story short, we ended up having to get uh, evacuated. Uh, but luckily, um, we were able to uh, come back up and obviously finish the movie. But it was one of those moments where, you know. 
we had just started getting our groove and then it was like oh gosh i don't know that we're even going to have a movie to finish anymore oh like, wow I think, yeah like that's so this may be it you know and so there had to i had to really sort of you know we had to come back and sort of reassess a bunch of stuff in terms of production but um i remember um when this happened i was very sort of like you know Oh my God, my movie, you know, it's happening. <laughs> and so, but um, our cinematographer, Stephen Tringali said to me, and I'll never forget this. He said, you know, there's always a silver lining in any situation. And he said, the silver lining in this situation is that you get an opportunity that most filmmakers don't get, which is to go back over the footage that you've already shot to see if you're missing anything. And, um, and so I was able to, take the time that we had um, in this little break and actually go over, you know, the footage that we had and it turned out we were missing stuff. And so it ended up oh. being, you know, dare I say a blessing in disguise, but mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, you just never know. You just never know. And I feel Very like, true. yeah, got to take, got to take whatever silver lining you can. Uh, like. Of course, of course. And uh, having, you know, one movie, uh, completed that you've you've directed um will we be seeing another one yeah i'm working on another thriller it's called american cabin and um i'm sort of you know being in quarantine we'll sort of see how things kind of shake down in the next year in terms of production mm -hmm. but it's um uh i guess the most i can say about it is that it's another thriller and i'm really excited about it and it takes place in a cabin but the other project that I'm working on that people might be interested in is, uh, is uh, my return to acting a little bit. I'm working with Yay! David Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with David Lewis, the director of Redwoods, on this uh, oh. uh, rom-com uh, uh, called All About Love. And so mm -hmm. that's something I'm very, very excited about that we're working on together. And so that's hopefully I'll have more news about that in the coming year. Oh, terrific. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. So um, let, let me ask you, um, you know, because, you know, for me, you've been so uh, integral to the gay indie uh, cinema um, field. Um, I, to me, it seems it, it's changed a lot. And it, it seems to me that it, it's probably because... Um, a lot, a lot of gay themes have gone mainstream and it's, 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 it's almost, you know, it's, it used to be like a movie like gone, but not forgotten. It was like, it was like, Oh, it was, it was, it was ours for like the, you know, for the, the gay community. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, it, it's, it's like so great that we're, you know, more accepted, but you know, now it's like some of those special things are like, sort of like, getting taken over by main, you know, more mainstream. I mean, what, what are yeah. your feelings about that? My feelings about it are they, I, I remember initially being conflicted about it, but I have to say, I feel overwhelmingly like what a great freaking problem to have. Like, I love sure. that this is the situation that we're in. Right. For example, right. Like, they just recently in L.A., you know, Pride has always been in West Hollywood, which is sort of the gay area in L.A., and that's always been where Pride is, and uh, they are changing that for the first time, and it's not going to be in, um, in West Hollywood anymore. And I think that that is so great, that it's, that it's no longer, we're no longer confined to a neighborhood, you know, that we are we are here like this is like we this is our home like because we are mm. here and so right. i love that that um that gay indie cinema is sort of really becoming just indie cinema and right you know right. and that's just sort of what it is and so True. i i for one am like i'm happy to see that happening i love seeing that change and that sort of evolution happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I can't believe it, but we're, we're basically at the end of our show. Um, 
I know. I mean, I could I could continue to talk to you for hours, but I'm sure both of our husbands would would be like, I swear, aren't you done yet? I know my husband would be. I know my husband would be. Cut me dinner. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, Matthew, I have I have dishpan hands from all the all the pots and pans that I'm scrubbing, but. Um, uh, but Matthew, I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your day to, to join me. Um, please tell everyone where they can find you on social media. I know you have a you do have your own website. Yeah, my website is montgomerymatthew.com. and um, I'm on Facebook, Matthew Montgomery, uh, Twitter uh, at Mateo Montgomery. And Instagram at Montgomery Matthew. Okay, and of course, um, streaming right now on Amazon Prime is the movie you directed, Devil's Path. Yes, yes. So, so definitely, I would love for yeah. Please check that out. It's on Amazon Prime. I believe it's on iTunes also, but Amazon Prime. Yes, de definitely check it out. And I'm very I very excited about it. Gotta love Amazon Prime. So. Uh, again, Matthew, thank you so much for for joining me. Um, I loved you. having I loved having you here. You are a terrific guest. And like 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 I was saying before we went on the air, I've been such a, a big fan of yours for you know so many so many years. And you're just uh, I I love all the films you've done. Uh, I even love Socket, even though my husband doesn't like it. <laughs> Tell me, give it another try. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I, like I, I can't go down that road again. You can't, you can't, can't do it. Can't okay. that but Matthew, thank you, thank you so much for uh, joining me, and I want to thank everyone who has tuned in to watch uh, me with Mister. Which way am I, Mister. Matthew Montgomery? <laughs> I will be back again in two weeks with a very special guest, uh, Jesse Gender, who is a, uh, a YouTube uh, host. And uh, Matthew, you would probably enjoy, enjoy Jesse quite a bit. Uh, she is a, uh, a transgender advocate and uh, self-professed Star Trek nerd. And awesome. she, does some, she does some great uh, videos on YouTube. And... Uh, that will be in two weeks. You can catch me in uh, one week on my Facebook show, Naughty or Nice. Naughty, actually, it's Naughty or Nice, because there's six eyes in there, uh, with New York City legend Alexis Flame. So until then, I bid you all good night. Please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. Matthew, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun. Good night, everyone. Twilly dilly dee. Twilly dilly dee. Twilly dilly dee. Twilly dilly dee. Tweet, 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 tweet. She talks to the people all night long, chatting and a gabbing and a singing her song. All the divas down on Rainbow Street love to hear Tony go tweet, tweet, tweet. Talking Tony. Tweet, tweet. Talk, talk, talking Tony. Tweet. Oh, talking's only gonna, really gonna talk tonight.